Right, so payback period. Now, as the name suggests, payback. What do you think this is about? Mm -hmm. Payback. Payback. <laughs> and so, what do you mean? Eh? <laughs> Maybe I'm more. What, what is the meaning of payback? What is a payback? What does it mean? Time to pay back, to repay, like, the, the, the duration, to repay. To repay what? To, to, to get back the money invested. Invested in the project. So the payback period simply measures how long it takes an entity to recover what? The initial cost of an investment. Okay? How long it takes an entity to recover the initial cost of an investment. That is what we call the payback period. How long it takes an entity to recover the initial cost of a project. Now, when it comes to the payback period, the decision rule is this. The decision rule is that the shorter the period, the better it is for the company. The shorter the period, the more acceptable is the project. The shorter the period, the more acceptable is the period. Sorry, is the project. The shorter the period, the more acceptable is the project. That is a decision rule for the payback period. Now, what does it mean? Sometimes in the question, the examiner may give you two projects. Maybe project A, project B. Now, if project A has a payback of five years and project B has a payback of eight years, which one will you go for based on payback period? A, because the shorter the period, the better it is for the company. Other times, the organization or the examiner will tell you that the entity has its own payback period. So if the entities, okay. So if the entity's payback period is say, is say six years, and you calculated your payback, and it is less than this, then you can undertake the project. But if it is more than the entity's payback period, then you cannot what, undertake the project. So the payback can be used to compare or to make a choice between two projects. Or it can also be used to make decisions when the entity sets its own payback period. But if those two things are not there, the decision rule is that the shorter the period, the better it is. Or the more acceptable is the project. So let's crunch some numbers about the payback period. So example, KKPLC invest $120,000 into a new project with a net cash flows as follows. So here, cash flows. So one, two, three, four, five. So the project has a five of a life of six years. So we're working in thousands up, and we're gonna have initial stages fifty thousand dollars, one twenty thousand, seventy-five thousand dollars. $82,000, and then $12,000. So this is the cash flows, and the requirement is calculate the payback period. Calculate the payback period.
So we pull our shadow up. And we're gonna put here, we're gonna put cash flow, and we're gonna put cumulative cash flow. Here, cash flow, cumulative cash flow. So we start. Year zero is the cost of the project, and that is 120, and that's a cash outflow, so it will be negative. Then we do for each year one after the other. Year one, we will receive how much? 50. So that will cumulatively reduce our amount to how much? 70. Oh, what a nice project. Then year two, how much are we having? 75. Now, so if we will go to a positive of what? So this is still negative, but we will now go to a positive of what? Five. So what is the payback period? What's the payback period? One is between one and what? Two years. So the way we calculate the payback period is this. So the payback period will be equal to the year before we went into positive, which is one year, plus how much money came in before to, to take us to positive? 75. No, no, no. How much money we were left with to go to positive? How much are we, were we left with? How much? 70. Divided by how much money came in for us to go to positive? Times one year. So please, get that well. Let me take that again. To get a payback period, it is the year before we go to positive, which is one year, plus how much money we needed to go to positive? 70 divided by the cash flow that came in to take us to positive. So how much are we going to have? One point nine three years. So that's the payback period. Very short, sweet, straight to the point. That's the idea. So it's very important you get this concept because if you miss this concept, then you are in trouble in relation to that. Now, in this question, we can't make any decision rule, but from the out, if the product has a six years, and in 1.9 years you can take your money, will you undertake the project or you will not? You will, because the shorter the period, the better it is for the company, or the more acceptable the project is going to be. That is the idea about the payback period. But as sweet as it looks, and as nice as it sounds, it has some limitations. So let's look at some limitations of the payback period. Limitations of the payback period. What do you think? Uh, some of the limitations here. Looking at the idea we've had, what do you think are some of the limitations? Or maybe some of the limitations? Yeah? We've been trying to draw into us well. What are some of the limitations here? Do you see any? You can see that after the payback period, the cash flows after the, we don't consider it. So one of the limitations of the payback period is that it ignores cash flows after the payback period. It ignores cash flows after the payback period. Meaning it doesn't consider all the cash flows through the life of the project. So it ignores the cash flows after the payback period. is that it doesn't take into consideration the time value of money. It doesn't take into consideration the time value of money. It doesn't take into consideration the time value of money. 
Because you can see that we are in second year, but we are just using the money in second year as though it is right now. So it doesn't take into consideration the time value of money. Then the last thing that we can mention about this is that it doesn't incorporate the effect of tax on the project. It does not incorporate the effect of tax on the project. Even though this could be incorporated, the formula does not incorporate it. It does not incorporate tax in the project. Now, so these are the limitations of the pay by period. It is for the second limitation which said, which we said it does not consider time value of money, why the second one was developed, which is the discount, the discounted payback period. The discounted payback period. 